forever and never for all eternity. O oh, accursed sin, to what a miserable end that will one day conduct so many miserable poor souls. O oh, unhappy souls for whom this lamentable end is reserved. On the pains of hell. It is of faith that there is a hell. In the middle of this earth is this prison, reserved for the punishment of those who rebel against God. What is hell? It is a place of torments, a place of torments where all the senses and powers of the damned shall have their appropriate torment. And the more a person has offended God in any particular sense, so much more shall he be tormented in that sense. With what compassion should we hear that a poor man was enclosed in a dark pit for his whole life, or for forty or fifty years? Hell is a pit enclosed on every side, where no ray of the sun or any other light ever enters. The sense of smell shall be tormented. We read in the life of St. Martin that the evil one appeared to him on one occasion, and the stench that filled the room was so overwhelming that the saint said to himself, If one single devil has such a disgusting odor, what can the stench be in hell, where there are thousands of devils altogether? In hell they will be laid over one another, heaped up together like sheep in the winter season. Nay more, they will be like grapes crushed under the press of the wrath of God. From this shall also come the pain of immobility. Let them become immovable as a stone. Exodus 15:16. Thus as the damned fall into hell at the last day, so they will have to remain without ever changing their position, but without moving hand or foot as long as God is God. The hearing shall be tormented by the continual howling and wailing of those despairing wretches. The devils will make perpetual noises. How painful is it to one who wishes to sleep, to hear the continual moaning of a sick person, the barking of a dog, or the crying of a child. Unhappy souls who are condemned to hear continually, for all eternity, the cries and the howls of those tortured wretches. We know that men often sin through intemperance, greedily indulging themselves in food and drink. Consequently, God has appointed a severe penalty for this sin in the next world. Christ foretells it indeed in the words, Woe to you that are filled, for you shall hunger. Luke 6.25 It is impossible for us to form a true idea of the pangs of hunger, since we have never felt them. If for a whole day one has nothing to eat, the time seems very long and one wants some food very much. And if one were deprived of any nourishment for two or three days, what misery would it be? But if a man had nothing whatever to eat for a whole week and were left a prey to hunger, what would become of him? Besides hunger, the damned suffer the most burning thirst, which is beyond the power of words to describe. Everyone knows how terrible are the sufferings caused by thirst. They are simply unbearable. Those who are plagued by thirst will drink from the most impure sources, and if nothing at all can be obtained to quench their thirst, a lingering and painful death is the result. The thirst suffered by the lost souls is infinitely greater, more intense, more painful than any thirst experienced on earth. If mortal man could feel it even for a brief period, he would faint away and die immediately. There is never any rest for the damned. They are driven from one torment to another unceasingly. This occasions thirst. But the heat of hellfire, wherein they burn day and night forever and ever, is the principal cause of this intolerable thirst that consumes them. They are immersed in flames, and never do they obtain the refreshment of water. My God, how great their thirst must be. Listen to the appeal of a lost soul earnestly imploring a single drop of water. Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water to cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Most merciful God, I ask only for water. I crave only one drop of water to give momentary relief to my burning tongue. Thou wilt not refuse so moderate a request. Thou who art praised by all creatures is goodness itself, but this supplication is in vain. God turns a deaf ear to the voice of their entreaty. Not a single drop of water is given to mitigate their sufferings. 
To still the intolerable pangs of hunger, people will devour whatever they can lay their hands on. Grass, leaves, unclean and disgusting animals. Men have been driven even to feed on the flesh of their fellow men, mothers to sacrificing their children, and some have been known to gnaw on their own flesh. They drag on until all their strength is consumed. Finally, through the torture of starvation, they lose their senses. They rave and cry and howl and die the most miserable of deaths. If such are the effects of hunger upon earth, what will be the hunger which will be experienced in hell? If one of food for a few days only causes such torture, what will a continual and never-ending hunger be like? Who can think without horror at the hunger suffered in hell? Some other torments of hell. The Venerable Bede relates the following story of a man who was dangerously sick and one night was thought to be dead. The next morning he recovered consciousness to the astonishment of all who were with him and rose from his sickbed saying that God had granted him an extension of days in order that he might lead a different life. After dividing his property among his children and giving a portion of it to the poor, he entered upon an excessively different mode of life. Shutting himself up in a small tent beside a river, he spent his days and nights in weeping. In wintertime he plunged up to the throat in the icy waters of the river, and then shivering and benumbed by the cold he immersed himself in hot water, which caused him such agony that he could not restrain his cries. When questioned as to the reason of his strange conduct, and how he could possibly bear the sudden alternations of extreme heat and extreme cold. He replied, I have seen worse things than that. What did you see? The others asked him. And he replied, I have seen how the unhappy souls in another world are cast out of a raging fire into icy cold, and from icy cold back into the burning flames. When I realize what they have to endure, I count my slight sufferings as nothing. This story related by such a holy man as Venerable B shows how terrible indeed are the torments of hell. On the smoke of hell. In this horrible darkness the damned lie helpless as blind men, or as those who have had their eyes cruelly put out. They see nothing, for smoke stings their eyes, and the poisonous fumes of sulfur destroy their sight. We know how dense this smoke is from the account given by St. John in Apocalypse 14.11. Thou knowest how disagreeable smoke is to the eyes and nostrils. In fact, no one can remain in it for a quarter of an hour without suffocating and being half blinded. If this is so on earth, what will it be like in hell? Even in this life, the pain of fire is the greatest of all pains. But the difference between our fire and that of hell is such that, according to St. Vincent Ferrer, our fire is cold. Our fire is created for our use, but the fire of hell is created by God expressly to torment. So that unhappy wretch will be surrounded by fire like wood in a furnace. You will find an abyss of fire below, an abyss above, an abyss on every side. If he touches, sees, breathes, he breathes only fire. He will be in fire like a fish in water. This fire will not only surround the dam, but it will enter into his bowels to torment him. His body will become all fire, so that the bowels within him will burn. His heart will burn in his bosom, his brains in his head, his blood in his veins, even the marrow in his bones. Each reprobate will in himself become a furnace of fire. Some cannot bear to walk on a road burnt up by the sun nor can they endure a spark that flies from a candle. And yet they fear not that fire which devours. The fire of hell devours the damned. It devours without ever destroying them. In hell there is no hope, neither true nor false. The unhappy wretch will always have written before his eyes his condemnation, to weep forever in that pit of torments. Hence the damned not only suffer what they suffer in each moment, but they suffer in each moment the pain of eternity, saying, What I now suffer, I shall have to suffer forever. The punishments of this life pass, but the punishments of the other life never pass. The punishment of hell will be great, 
but that which ought most terrify us is that it will be irrevocable. Hell is but little.